nobody calls it out. Unbelievable. It's just part of the woodwork. Treason is just endemic in this country. Uh, Lee. It seems to me the mechanism to gut the military is if the Bush tax cuts are not uh, allowed to stand, sequestration will go into effect. Yeah. Can you t have you traced back at all who were the, the people besides Mr. Bush that signed the tax cuts that actually set this up so this mechanism could go into place? No, look, I haven't, so I, I just haven't researched <clears throat> that. But even if they didn't have that, they would look, 20% of US federal spending is taking well over 50% of the cuts. If it wasn't for that, they'd find another way to do it. You know, they are going to destroy your military if you give them the chance. That is their number one priority. You just think about this. If you were a Russian or a Chinese leader and your military was gutted down to virtually nothing, would you stand by while a future Republican president campaigned and said, I'm going to restore the military to its previous levels. Would you stand by and let that happen? You would strike while America was at its lowest because you would not risk that being rebuilt. When you were in America where you wanted it, you wouldn't let that be changed. So there's real risks here of physical war because of this. Yes. You had mentioned that Obama had been uh less than supportive of the far left's plan to cut the military by appointing some conservatives and some moderates. At one point, uh, Admiral Mike Mullen, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, had remarked that our national debt is the greatest threat to our national security because the rising interest payments will eventually cripple our ability to pay for it. Since smart cuts like BRAC take years and years and years to figure out what can be trimmed around the edges. Do you believe that this is part of a deliberate plan by Barack Obama to create a funding crisis, a spending crisis, so that when inevitable cuts do come, there is no time to figure out what needs to be cut, what must be kept, and the whole process collapses into disarray? Well, just one little statement you said there. Mr. Obama was fully supportive of the left's plans to cut the military. Those conservatives were there as cover. Right, right. Okay. Do, you, do you believe he put those conservatives there as cover, knowing he could create a spending crisis? That yeah. Would lead well, that's what Mark Rudd said and in the second or third year of this recession. So it was a planned recession. It was planned to divert your people into economic... Look, if the economy was booming and Obama was cutting the military like he is today, wouldn't there be hell to pay? Wouldn't people be going absolutely crazy? But because you're worried about this, he can sell it. So look, I, I absolutely believe that, you know, he loves the economy being down. He wants to keep it up enough to get re-elected. But if he gets re-elected, he won't give a damn. The lower it goes, the better. Because that means he can slash, the econ slash your military even further. So his lovely Russian friends will give him a big clap, you know. So you look, I absolutely think it's deliberate. You know, this, was, this is a strategy to bring your country to its knees. Because a strong, a strong economically and military strong America is the only thing stopping the bad guys of this world having their way. And the Russians were humiliated by Reagan and they want their revenge. And they're on the verge of getting it. Yes, sir. Can you comment on Mr. Soros? Yeah, dear old Georgie. It always comes up. Look, I'm going to I'll speculate a little bit about this. And I don't normally speculate, but... I just want to draw a few things to your attention. Now, George Soros was a little Hungarian Jewish boy when the Nazis invaded Hungary. Young, 13 or 14 years old, I think he was. So his father got him adopted, fostered out to a Christian family to hide him from the Nazis, protect him, which is very sound. But the father, the father of that family was a capo. His job was to confiscate Jewish property for the Nazis. And little George used to tag along and thought it was a great lark. But then the Soviets invaded and kicked out the Nazis and they were hanging Nazi collaborators from the lampposts, shooting them and sending them to Siberia. Yet little George Soros, who was effectively a Nazi collaborator, was allowed to leave Soviet-occupied Hungary through numerous checkpoints, Soviet-occupied Austria through numerous checkpoints and go out to the west. Now, how easy would that be 
unless one had made a deal with the authorities. How easy. Now, George Soros, ever since, in the 80s, 70s, he had high-level access to the Chinese government, high-level access to the Russian government, far greater than most Westerners would have. Everything he has done has been to the detriment of Israel, the United States, and the West. He's been funding radical Marxist groups all over this country for decades, trying to bring this country down. He's openly stated it. So, anybody here remember the, ever heard of a man called Armand Hammer? Yes. Yeah. 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 Armand Hammer, son of the founder of the US Communist Party, but he was a big businessman in the 20s, trading with the Soviet Union. He was the best friends of Lenin, helped to keep the Soviet Union alive made billions at it. And he also went on to mentor a Tennessee senator, became great friends, political sponsor. That Tennessee sen senator was a man called Albert Gore Sr. Some of you might have heard of his son. If it hadn't been for him, Sharon and I couldn't have connected over the internet. <laughs> but I, I regard George Soros as the modern-day Armand Hammer. Mm -hmm. I think he's been using Russian money and laundering it and getting information from the Russians to build up his... You know, if you had an, an intelligence service working for you, that would be pretty easy to make some good business deals, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. You could make a lot of money. So that's my, that's my theory on Mr. Soros. And when this country gets serious about internal security again and starts holding congressional hearings into subversives in this country, Right after Mr. Obama, I think Mr. Soros, or Panetta, I think Mr. Soros should be subpoenaed and investigated thoroughly. Lady up the back. Um, I read something about George Soros owning a company that was going to be in charge of counting the ballots in Florida. Mm. Oh, yeah, look, I'm not sure. That came from Michael Savage. And I'm not quite sure if it's accurate or not. Yeah, but it was, a, yeah, it was a company in Spain mm. that was contracted to um, count ballots, but I'm not sure if it's accurate. I hope it's not. But look, Soros is involved in everything. He is working against your judicial system. He's funding all these groups trying to destroy your justice system, your police. <coughs> you name it. Anything good about America, George Soros is trying to wreck it. You know, he's got billions to do that. Trevor. Yes, Cindy. Just one thing. That if you don't come to the meetings, you should, what he just said about the, uh, I have the uh, Congress's unofficial subversive uh, investigation that they did in the 60s. I have it. It's a congressional thing. Oh, that there's they had lots done. of them. There's heaps yes. Of them. Well, I have the original thing, and I have all of the members and all of the groups. And Glenn Harris, who's not here tonight, he's a member, he gave me cases of the American Conservative Magazine, which was the John Birch Society. And I had given it out to some people, and I asked them to read it and come back to our meetings and tell me what they thought. And they thought, this is the Tea Party. This yeah. is what we're fighting. Yeah. And it's still the same people. If you go back and read those magazines, we're still doing the same thing. They've yeah. been in our government. Yeah. Second question is, did you, did you, what, two questions. Did you talk to anybody in Hawaii? Because there is a man who is a state senator. His name is Senator Sloan. He has lived in the same building with Barack Obama for seven years. He had made a comment about the Department of Health being a, uh, uh, corrupt uh, department and I had picked up the phone and called him one day when I was in my little bunker and he told me well I can even tell you that probably the certificate is the birth certificate is probably a fraud but I'm not even going to get into that I'm just going to tell you what I know living on the same floor three doors down from Barack Obama for seven years I talked to him a month ago not one reporter not one nobody has ever contacted him he writes for the Florida, for the Honolulu Independent, and he is a state senator, and nobody in the press knows any, didn't even try so to what, what kind of things do you say about Obama? Um, the comings and goings of people in and out of there, the drugs, <clears throat> um, the fact how he treated his family, um, the relationship that sounded so cozy with his grandmother really wasn't, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah you hear the stories about the drug dealing and all that yeah. kind of thing, you know. Yeah, there's, 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 just, there's just a veil of corruption about the man right from the word go, you know.
Who, who is another Christian? You, sir. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Hillary Clinton has a, an assistant. Uh, Muma Abedin. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And her mother is involved. Muma was involved with it. Yeah, the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah, yeah, and and um, Michelle Bachman raised questions about it, and um, John McCain and Marco Rubio yeah. shot her down. You know, look, that's it's totally it's you know the, the Muslim Brotherhood has infiltrated both the Democrat Party and elements of the Republican Party. You know, the, the, through Suhail Khan on the board of the American Civil Liberties uh, American Conservative Union through Grover Norquist, they're getting in there as well. So look, it's, it's a big security issue. And, and the thing you've got to realise is that the radical left is allied to radical Islam. So the leftists, there's nothing unusual about a leftist like Ant Anthony Weiner being married to a radical Islamist. That's just a natural fit. They work together all the time. And so yeah, it's, it's look, look, as I say, none, why does treason never <coughs> prosper? Because none dare call it treason. When treason prospers, none dare call it treason. These radical Islamists are working at the highest levels of your State Department, your USAID, you know, in the FB, with the FBI. They're on FBI advisory <coughs> councils. You know, and it's just endemic. And, and you know, America, you know, America is sitting on the greatest, richest country in the world. Don't Americans realise that people want to take that away? Yeah. You know, you wouldn't have a, you wouldn't sit on a big pile of cash in your backyard and put a big sign out the front saying, "We never lock our doors. We've got lots of cash and gold here, and the police are miles away." Would you? But that's what America's doing now. Yeah, we don't. You're sitting on the biggest storehouse of wealth and treasure and armaments in the world, and you've forgotten about security. And, and, and you're right, you know, and Marco Rubio, to his great disgrace, and, and, and McCain shot down Michelle Bachman for trying to raise legitimate questions about infiltration at the highest levels of your State Department. You know, he should be ashamed of himself. Yes, ma'am? Um, two quick questions. Would you comment on the movie 2016? And will you say... Are you saying it's not going to come from a specific direction? It's like a global endeavor. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, look, look. It's it's um. This is like an octopus. You know, you've got radical Islam. You've got, and I and I'll just give some examples on that. A friend, look. You know the the. We all know that the Islamics, that the communists have infiltrated the Catholic, the the, the the mainstream Christian churches in this country for a long time. But over in the Middle East, they've been infiltrating the Islamic seminaries since the 1930s. And they have been using the radical Islamic movement as a battering ram against the West. The Russians, the Soviets, actually established the Palestine Liberation Organization, the anti-Israeli terrorists. The number two guy in Al-Qaeda was trained by the KGB. You know, the Taliban is as much Maoist as it is Muslim. But you never hear this kind of stuff. They are working together hand in glove. So you've got the United Nations out here, you've got the Russians there, the Chinese there, the Iranians, and they're all working on your country in various ways. Economic, through drugs, through um, terrorism, through um, espionage, you name it. You know, because this country is the number one enemy. And um, so... So, so what was the other question? Uh, 2016. Yeah, 2016. You know, I, I watched that movie and it was very well produced. They did a great job of it. I think it was like if, if, I, if they did a movie about what I was saying here now, probably most people couldn't watch it. <laughs> you know, honestly, because you're a Tea Party folk and you, are, you have a background in this kind of stuff. So it's not quite as far-fetched and way out to you guys. But 2016 was about as much as most people could stomach, I would have thought. And that should have raised a lot of anybody going to see that who's a concerned citizen should be, you know, be pretty worried. So I think he's done a great job of it, it's doing a great service. But I think one day somebody's got to do a movie on just how bad this guy is or was. You know, this guy is totally connected to Marxist, communist, socialist, radical, Islamist. He is the first anti American president. 
Absolutely. But he means well. He means well, yeah. 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 He yeah. means well if you're a Russian. Yeah. 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 Do you know the author of Abomination? Yeah, Jerry Corsi. What do you think? Is that, was he active?